missing one of these? I wonder, ooh, I, I know what we can do with this. All right, let's see where we can go. Ooh, ooh, it's a bit hot, there's so much sand. Uh, I don't know if I like this one, let's, uh, let's change it up. Ooh, look at that, look at all the green. Oh, some birds over there. This is much nicer. Let's see if we can get, make it a little bit better. All right, mm, the plus button, that'll do it. Here we go. Oh, oh, it's way too hot here. I'm, oh, I'm here to go quick. Uh, four, let's do four. Oh, 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 me, I was, oh, oh, what, oh, 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 smoke, it's so scary. Oh, oh, I'm above the clouds, I'm flying. Oh, I'm flying everywhere. Oh, oh no, we're late for village kids. Quick, I wonder how I can get back. Here we go. Oh, all right, we're finally here. Guys, welcome to Village Kids Church Online, where the kids do the Village Church Online through the videos and your little screen. You can see me and all the fun leaders. That's what we're doing today, Village Church Kids Online. We're so glad you've joined us. It's so fantastic that we can keep looking at the Bible together through these videos, finding out more about God. But just before, we think thinking about the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, what a catch. Hey, someone's already eating this. Oh, mmm, fruit of the Spirit. The Bible, as we've been looking at, talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It's from a book called Galatians. And these are the fruit of the Spirit. We've been trying to remember them, so hopefully you can. Say them with me if you know them. Ready? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and a, yeah, self-control. God is growing those in us as we continue to love and to follow Him. So, each week, we'll keep going back, keep thinking about it. I want you to keep thinking about it as well. But... On to the book of James. Now, last week we started the book of James. We're continuing the book of James. We're going to be looking at a big idea. That's sort of a way that we're kind of trying to bring all the ideas of the passage together so that it makes sense. Today's big idea. If you've got paper, write it down. You ready? 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 I don't think you're ready. Okay, ready? The big idea is that God is pure and spotless. God is pure and spotless. Write that down. We'll come back to it. But... Let me get into what we're about to do today. And before I do that, we've got some marshmallows. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a marshmallow in my mouth, everything that we're doing today, and hopefully it's going to make a lot of sense at the end. Uh, spoiler, it won't make any sense. Okay, you ready? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pray, and then we're going to sing, and then we're going to learn from the Bible, and then we're going to play a game. And then we're going to pray again. And then after we do that, we're going to make a class with some paper. And then, oh God, well, this is going to come from okay? Oh yeah, we're going to do the same in the Bible. Ah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay, after, oh man, there's so many more things. Ah, oh, we're going to have a puppet. We're going to see Jiggery again, and I'm going to get a memory verse, and then I'm going to try one more time, and then I'm not going to see a memory verse! Woohoo! Oh! Mm. Alright, hey, <laughs> let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come together through videos. We pray that you would help us to grow today. Help us to be thinking more about who you are, that you are pure and spotless, and help us to follow you, obey you better. Amen. Hey, we're going to sing some songs with Colin now, so jump up on your feet. He's got some stuff for you to do. Let's go. G'day. I'm Colin. Two... Three, I'm counting the hairs on my head. Four, you've got to really concentrate. Wait, was it that one? Was that four? Or was that three? I've lost count now. There's quite a few hairs on there. All right, I, I know, I count something else. Um, last time I went to the beach, I brought some sand home in a bag. And I thought, well, I'll count a little bit at a time and see if I can count all the little grains of sand on the beach. So I'll start with... It's only a few here. So, uh, one, two, three. Actually, they do all look quite the same. There's 
Oh, they do look the same. I can't remember which one I was up to. That's going to take forever. I have to do it later. <laughs> um, what else could I count? I know. I could go outside and count the leaves on the trees. But think of all the forests in the world and all the trees in the forests and all the leaves on the trees. Too many. There are some things when you think about them, they just seem to get bigger and bigger and bigger. What about people? There are so many people, aren't there? Like if I think about my family, there's my wife, Robin, and then there's me, and then there's Elliot, my boy, and his wife, Claire, and then Laura and her husband, Tim, and then there's Emily, and then there's Riley. And so that's, that's eight, and that's just our family. And then there's more families. There's more families next door, and there's people down the street and in our city, and then there's lots of cities in our country, and there's lots of countries in the world. So many people. Let me read something God says about people in the Bible. It's in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and it says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. There's so many people in the world, and they're all made by God in his image. That means he makes them to be like him, to love and to live and to do good like God. Now, I can't count all the people in the world, can I? Hmm, let me think. No. But can God? Yes. And he doesn't just count people. He doesn't just, he doesn't just know how many there are. He knows them, each one. It's amazing. He loves them and he cares for them and he sees them all. And you know what? He calls them. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross and to save us from our sins. All right. We should listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10. It's something about how precious people are. All right. Let me have a look. Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 to 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. <laughs> Did you hear that? The hairs of our head are numbered. God sees us and he knows us. And sparrows, well, there's lots of sparrows and lots of birds. And God says he sees each one of them fall. And if he sees them we don't need to be afraid because we are worth much more than sparrows. It's very good to know that, isn't it? Now, God cares for the sparrows. God cares for the ah ah, the crow, the old black crow, and the dig 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 dig, the wombat, and the wriggle wriggle gecko, and the kangaroo. And there's a song about that. I'm going to sing it now. Maybe you know it. There are actions. It's hard to do the actions when you're playing the guitar. But anyway, I might try, see what happens. All right. The old black crow. There's an old black crow sitting in the gum tree. He's plump and he's well fed. A beetle here, a cicada. There is the black crow's daily bread. I think it should be said there's a Lord who cares for the old black crow, the dig, the wombat, the gecko, and the kangaroo. And one thing sure, we are worth much more to the God who cares for people too. Skiddly do. I just added that bit. All right, what's next? The wombat. Mrs. Wombat digs, come on, herself a little burrow to keep her warm and dry. It's a home sweet home that she's made her own Better than money can buy And here's the reason why There's a Lord who cares for the old black crow Wombat, the wombat, the gecko and the kangaroo And one thing sure we are worth much more To the God who cares for people 
to skiddly do. All right, what's next? The gecko. Actually, the gecko sticks its tongue out. Can you stick your tongue out? That's right. <laughs> the gecko lives in the sands of the desert where it's very dry and hot. He's small and frail with a stumpy tail, but hungry he is not. All he needs he's got. There's a lord who cares for the old black crow, the wombat, the gecko and the kangaroo. And one thing sure, we are worth much more to the god who cares for people too. Last one's the kangaroo. Ready? The Lord cares too for the kangaroo. I think we all can see that worth much more to the living Lord is you and you and me and me and you and you and me. There's a Lord who cares for the old black crow, the wombat, the gecko and the kangaroo and one thing sure we are worth much more to the God who cares for people too. Skiddly do, skiddly do. <laughs> Did you do all those actions? I think I did some of them, but I had to play the guitar as well. Well, it's precious to know that God cares for the world around us and he cares for us in a very special way. I think we should pray now. It's wonderful that he hears our prayers, isn't it? So let's talk to God. I'm going to close my eyes so I can think about what I'm saying. Our great almighty God, you made us before we were made, you were and you are from everlasting to everlasting. Thank you for the preciousness of people that you made us in your image, that you know us. Thank you that you sent Jesus and you called us to know him, that he saves us from our sins, saves us from sickness and badness and sadness. Thank you that our hair, the hairs of our, our head are numbered that you care for the old black crow and the wombat, the gecko and the kangaroo, and you care for us, our Lord and our God and our Father. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah! Ah! Bye. <laughs> What a great reminder of how much God cares for us. We're about to start our teaching time, so make sure you've got all the things that you need. You're going to need a Bible, of course. You're going to need some paper as we draw and write things, especially for craft. And you're going to need more textures. We're going to give you some time. Go get it right now. Go. Great, you're back. Let's begin by praying. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together. Uh, thank you that we can come and read the Bible and learn from it. Help us to think more about who you are and to then follow you from that. Amen. Now make sure if you've got a Bible open, you're at James chapter 1. We're going to be at the end of the passage, so we're going to be looking particularly at verse 18 to 27. We're not going to read all of it. You can do that at home with your family. Um, but we're going to be looking particularly at verse 27. 
because verse 27, it's right at the end of the passage and it helps us understand more about God. I'm going to read it. It says, Religion that pleases God, the Father must be pure and spotless. You must help needy orphans and widows and not let this world make you evil. Now, there's a lot of words in that, but I want to focus on two of those words. That's four. Too many fingers. Two of those words. Pure and spotless. Now, the Bible talks about God being pure and spotless. And so to understand how we should live, we need to understand who God is. And so let's explore those two words of pure and spotless. Now, I've got here a cup of water. Now, this cup of water is pure water. There's nothing else in it. There's not like little tiny bits. It's just water. This water is pure. Now, if I put this water over here, and I've got another bit of water. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make this water unpure. I'm going to try to undo this. I can't do it. I can't even do it. All right, two hands. That's how you do it. Ooh, there we go. This is cordial. We're going to put a bit of cordial into the water, and what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, yeah you know what's going to happen. Okay, ready? Just going to fingers out of the way. I'm going to pour it in. Here we go. It's turning. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's changed color. It's even, I, as I look closely, it's a little bit cloudy. See, it's not pure water anymore. This one is pure. There's nothing in it, but this one, it's impure. It's a bit cloudy. It's hard to see. It's changed color. It's different. When the Bible talks about God, he talks about how he is pure. There's nothing in there that ruins it. Now, although I like to think cordial makes it better, when we're talking about God, we're talking about all the bad things and actually he is pure and we are not. See, in that image of the cloudy water, it's like all the sin. If you have a little bit of cordial in it, it ruins the whole thing. It changes the whole color. God's not like that. He is pure. He is perfect. He is good. There is nothing wrong with him. And so when the Bible talks about God being pure, we need to remember that. Now, the second word, do you remember what it was? Yes, yeah, spotless. Now, spotless, that's a bit of an easier word to understand. If it's spotless, it has no spots. So I've got some socks. These are Beth's socks, actually. Now, we're just going to pretend they're perfectly white, but they've been a bit used, like all of our socks. But these are white socks. See how there's no spots on these socks? They're spotless. Pretty simple. Compared to my socks, let's put these over here. My socks are very spotty, or they're spot full. There's so many spots. There's red spots here. There's big green ones at the end. These are spotty socks. Now, the Bible's not talking about what color socks God wears. That would be a little bit weird. I don't actually think he has any socks. But when we're talking about God being spotless, it's understanding that there is, he is clean. There's nothing wrong with him. He might have done like a painting and you might have spilt a bit of paint on the wrong side and it's ruined a little bit. God's not like that. He is pure and he is spotless. There is nothing wrong with him. He is perfect. He is good. Everything that he does is perfect and good. We kind of learned about that last week, remember, with the good gifts and perfect gifts that God gives us. This week, we're reminded that God is pure and spotless. Now, the rest of that passage, we only looked at one verse, but the rest of that passage talks about what it looks like to be pure and spotless. It also talks about what it looks like for us to be impure and spotty. And that's not what we want to be. But James, as he writes his letter to his friends, he tries to show them. And so we're going to get a picture on the screen in a moment. We're going to have all the pure and spotless things and all the impure and spotty things. And we're going to look at how they're different. So let's look at that right now. We'll see that being pure looks like being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry, being calm, humble, accepting, obedient, wise, listening, and then doing. Being mirror rememberers. We'll come back to that one. That's a funny one. But having the perfect law, freedom, blessed, listening and obeying, controlling our tongue, useful, pleasing God, helpful and pure from evil. Now, those are all the things that God wants us to be like. But if we're honest and we look deep down in our heart, I reckon we're not like that. I don't think I'm like that all the time. I think I'm more like the other side. Let's read that one. Here we go. Slow to listen, quick to speak, quick to get angry. Angry, immoral and evil, disobedient, foolish, just listeners. Mirror forgetters. Remember, come back to that one. Imperfect law. Actually, we'll talk about that one next week a lot. Slavery, curse, 
hearing and forgetting, uncontrollable tongue, useless, displeasing God, hurtful and corrupted by evil. That's a sad list, isn't it? But I think if we're honest, that's kind of a little bit what we're like. I think we're quick to get angry, not very forgiving with our friends. We're sometimes a lot more hurtful. Now, one of those ones was about mirrors. Did you remember that one? That was a bit of a tricky one. Let me put this down. It was about a mirror. So here, I have a lovely mirror. This is, uh, I think it's Misha's mirror, but it's a very tiny mirror. But the Bible talks about actually that if we are serious about God, we are going to listen to Him. If we remember that He is pure and spotless, we're going to follow and obey Him. Now, the Bible talks about it being like a mirror. Let's get that verse up. If you've got your Bible open, you can go a little bit backwards, back to verse 23. Actually, let's go start 22. It says, obey God's message. Don't fool yourself by just listening to it. James wants us to do it as well. We can't just listen to God and go, yeah, it's good to be loving, but then not be loving. That's silly. It says, if you hear the message and don't obey it, you are like people who stare at themselves in a mirror. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? You see yourself, right? When you look in the mirror, you see your own reflection. You understand what your nose looks like, your mouth, your hair. That's what mirrors do. The Bible says that if we only listen to God and don't follow Him, we are like people who look at themselves in a mirror and forget what they look like as soon as they leave. Could you imagine that? Imagine looking in a mirror and going, oh yes, that's what I look like, and then going, dum-da-dum-da-dum. Oh wait, I forgot what I looked like. Have to go back to the mirror. That would be ridiculous, right? We would have mirrors on our hands. Everywhere would be a mirror. It's ridiculous, right? And James is saying that. He's like, guys, it's ridiculous. You can't just hear God's word and do nothing. You've got to hear and do something about it. See, if we listen to God, listen to his word that Jesus speaks that we can read in the Bible and we allow the spirit to change our hearts, actually we can be like the pure and spotless list. Because actually, Jesus has done everything for us. James knows this. Remember, he said, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. James knows this. And he wants his people to trust in Jesus, trust in God, listen and do. And so as we remember that God is pure and he is spotless, there are two things that I want us to think about. How do we go at obeying God and following him? If he's pure and spotless, we should be obedient to him. A lot of that list was about how we obey God, how we listen to what he says and we do it. It's no good being like the person with the mirror, listening to God, listening to God, and then forgetting all about it. We want to remember, just like we remember our reflection, we want to remember God's word. And so my prayer this week is that we continue to think about that through our weeks as we talk to our families, we might read the passage later, and we might do lots of different activities, that we think about how we obey and follow God. We need his help. So let's pray again for that. Join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your great love for us. Thank you that we can be good listeners. We can be hearing what you have to say and following it. But God, we know that we don't get that perfect all the time. So please, please, please help us to be more like Jesus. Please let the spirit grow the fruit inside of us that we've been learning about as well. Help us to be listeners and doers. Help us to love others. Help us to be helpful. Amen. Great work, guys. We're going to go to our next segment, so let's do it. Hi, everyone. My name's Emma, and I'm the new kids leader. I'm so excited to meet you all when we get out of this isolation period, but I'm really excited to do an activity with you all. But... I don't know where Patrick is. Patrick's meant to be here. Patrick? Patrick, where are you? Patrick, oh my. Sorry guys, I was late. I kind of overslept and then there might have been some draft or something. Why aren't you changed? Are we rolling now? Yeah, we're rolling right now. Why do you have a moustache? Because I look cool with a moustache. That's true. It's true. Go go get changed, go get changed, go get changed. Sorry, sorry. Eight hours later. So, so, so sorry. Um, What took you so long? Yeah, I'll tell you later. I had like giraffe and parking and don't, don't want to know. Anywho, hi, my name is Patrick. Uh, This is Emma. She's going to be our Oh, we've already done that. Oh, well, have you answered the three questions that you always need to ask as a new leader? The what three questions? 
Well, that's a no. Uh, so, first off, what is your favourite colour? My favourite colour is orange. Orange because every time I look at it, I look like I feel really happy. That is a solid choice. I respect that. Second question. Favourite breakfast? Favourite breakfast would be cornflakes. I always have a kilogram of cornflakes in my cupboard. It's a, it's a recent thing. I don't know how to feel about that, but we'll move on anyway. <laughs> favourite book of the Bible? Ooh, favourite book of the Bible is probably Ruth. Just because I really like, yeah, the character and how God is merciful to her. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, we're playing Simon Says, right? Yeah, that's right. So we'll explain the rules for you now. So what happens is I'll say, Simon says, put your hands on your head. And yeah, that's right. You also put your hands on your head. And then I might say, Simon says, touch your face. You'll touch your face. But if I don't say Simon says, then you're out. I'll start first. Okay. Simon says, put your hands on your head. Okay, Simon says, touch your toes. Simon says to, are you, are you doing it? Yeah, there we go. Simon says to, jump on the spot. All right, now touch your shoulders. Oh, got you. No. <laughs> This time around, I'm going to be Simon. Okay. All right. Simon says, touch your shoulders. Simon says, touch your elbows. Simon says, flap your arms. Simon says, rub your belly. Jump up and down. I don't think Simon said that though. Oh, no, you got me. Oh man, did you guys get caught? I'm gonna have another go. All right, ready? Gonna it's gonna be, it's gonna be trickier. No, I'm not, okay. gonna, I'm not gonna get caught. I promise, I'm not gonna get caught. <laughs> All right, Simon says to do silence. Okay, Simon says to sing opera. I 
think this is the final round. And this is the one where I get to catch Emma out. All right, ready? Simon says, touch it up. Sing opera as loud as humanly possible. Simon says, touch your chin. Simon says, touch your bum. Go run out into the street and steal all the ice cream. But Simon didn't say that. Simon says, touch your head. Simon says, destroy Tokyo as Godzilla versing a giant mech robot. <laughs> Cozy Corner for Prayer. Um, I'm Misha, if you remember from last week, and we're going to be praying here together. And this week, I have something special that's going to help us do our prayer. So I have my special dice here, and this has lots of things on each face, um, and it's going to tell me what I can be praying for. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this up in the air and catch it, and whatever face my thumb is on, that's what I'm going to pray through. So I'm going to give my example and then let you guys think about what you can pray for and we'll pray through those together. All right, here we go. So first one. Ooh. This one says, God, please help my friend blank with blank. All right, so you guys have to fill in those blanks. So think of a friend think I have my friend in mind and then you got to think about something that you want God to help them with. I think I have mine. I'm thinking of my friend um, Sally and she has just recently started reading the Bible for herself so I'm going to ask God that she would keep doing that each week. He would help her to do that. All right here we go. Dear God, please help my friend Sally continue reading your word in the Bible each week. Now you can also pray for your thing as well. All right. Amen. Did you guys pray for your thing? Yeah? Here we go. We'll do our second roll now. Oh, this is the pink side and it says, thank you, God, for blank. So you guys think of one thing that you want to thank God for. Have you thought of it? I've thought of mine. And mine is that I'm thankful for all the friends I get to catch up with when I call them, even though I don't see them face to face. All right, here we go. Let's pray together. Dear God, Thank you that I can still call my friends, even when I don't get to see them face to face. Thank you that we can catch up and still um, get to know each other and have fun together. Now you thank God for your thing as well. Right. Amen. And our final roll, here we go. This is the green side and it says, God, please help me with. Okay, have a little think about what you want God to help you with. Do you have your prayer? I have mine and I want God to help me um, really focus on praying with him during the day. I want to start praying when I wake up and when I go to bed and pray for lots of things, including my friends. That's me, but you think of your thing. All right, you ready to pray? 
Here we go. Dear God, please help me to want to pray to you more and talk to you more like I'm doing now. Please help me to pray to you in the remember to pray to you in the morning and before I go to bed as well. Remember to pray for your thing here. Amen. All right, thank you so much for praying with me, guys. We've been using our prayer cube today and we only prayed through three things, even though our cube has six sides and we will get to praying through the rest of these another week. But for now, we're going to head over and see where Emma's at so that we can start doing our craft with her. Thanks, Misha. So now we're going to go into a time of craft. And for today's craft, we're going to be making an arrow. Uh, and the arrow will say, obey and follow God. So we're going to be making an arrow that kind of looks a bit like this. There you go, with some words and some pictures. And it's up to you uh, what color the words are and what pictures you draw. And just letting you know that it is a little bit loud outside. So hopefully you can still hear me uh, as we do the craft. So first of all, we're going to actually write, obey and follow God. So in front of me, I have uh, some textures, colored pieces of paper, stamps, crayons, pencils and stickers. And this time we're actually gonna be using the stickers. All right, so I'm gonna grab a red pen. Before I begin, I must say, you got to make sure that you do it in the middle of the page. Otherwise, when you do the arrow, there's going to be no arrow. So we're going to be focusing in the middle of the page. So the first word is obey. Big O. There we go. Sometimes I find it hard to obey, especially my parents. But it's really important that we do because God asks us to obey our parents to follow our parents. There we go. All right, done with the red. Now we're gonna go orange. This is for and. Orange is my favorite color. It always kind of just makes me happy. I don't know, I don't know why, but looking at orange makes me happy. Then let's go uh, blue, my second favorite color. Obey and follow. Look at that. Good job. There we go. Now I'm going to choose green for God. And I'm going to make it big because God's big. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Here we go. Obey and follow God. That's kind of what it should look like. And remember, you can do uh, whatever you want. You can do bubble writing. You can do different colors. It's really up to you. All right. Now I'm going to show you a trick on how to draw an arrow. So grab in a pen. What you got to do is make two lines at the top of the page and at the bottom of the page. And then you're going to draw a line like that. So then it's kind of like a triangle, but it's not a complete triangle. And then what you're gonna do is follow a line like that and another line like that. And then you're gonna connect them together. Like so, there you go. Awesome, good job. All right, so now we're going to decorate it. Let's see, I think I am actually gonna start with some stickers. Last time Josh forgot to use the stickers, which is a shame because stickers are cool. There we go, all right. Put an orange star there. If you don't have stickers, that's fine, you can you can just, you know, draw or um, you can use glue if you have it. 
and glue uh, pictures on. It's up to you. There you go. And a blue star. There you go. And then I'm going to draw some planets because God made the universe. And it's a good reminder that sometimes I get caught up in my own little world when in reality God created the world. So we should be focusing on God. There we go. I'm going to draw. And what else? I should, I should probably draw the sun. I'll draw the sun. There you go. Big sun like that. And what else? I'll draw the moon and that'll be it. There we go. Awesome. Good job. There you go. That's kind of what it looks like now. All right. Now we're going to cut the arrow out. So if you have scissors, you can grab them and we can start cutting together. If you don't have scissors, that's fine. You can cut the arrow out later. And if you're not feeling great with scissors, then you can get an adult to cut it out for you. All right. So now I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors. Thank you, Josh. And let's start cutting. All right. So you can either cut a little bit out from the line or you can do what I'm doing and cut on the line. Whatever you do is fine. There we go. Oh, it's raining outside. Can you hear that rain? There we go. All right, good job. Following the line. Oh, if you don't following the line exactly, that's fine. It's easy as long as you don't cut out the words because that's the most important part. There we go. Oh, almost done. Kind of looks like a house from this angle. There we go. And done. There we go. Now I've got my own little arrow. So I'm going to put this on my door so I can remind myself to obey and follow God every time I uh, enter or leave my bedroom. Hey guys, we're going to settle down a bit now, jump into our cozy corner. I'll uh, get rid of this stuff. There we go. Um, we're going to be looking at a story today, um, not a parable like last time, but one of the events that happened as Jesus was moving around um, towards a place called Jericho. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to see how um, we might be able to react when we see something that is pure and good like God. Um, so this is from Luke 19. If you want to go read it for yourself, please, please do. We really encourage that. But I'll go through that story now. So we have Jesus who is traveling all around Judea. Uh, he's going to a place uh, called Jericho at this time. And he's being swarmed by the crowds. Um, people are just so curious to hear what he has to say. Um, what Jesus is talking about was radical, um, was really, really important. Uh, and so many people swarmed around Jesus. And one of those people was a man named Zacchaeus. Um, however, Zacchaeus uh, was very short and he couldn't actually uh, see over the rest of the crowd. You can see here in this picture, him in the blue, um, not being able to reach over those guys' shoulders there. Uh, and also those guys, probably didn't like Zacchaeus very much. You see, Zacchaeus was what was called a tax collector. He went around and took money from his neighbors and gave it to the Roman Empire. Um, and he often would keep a bunch of that money for himself, which is very dishonest and made a lot of people not, very, not like him very much. Um, however, Zacchaeus knew that Jesus was coming. And so he really wanted to see him. He knew Jesus was important. Um, so what Zacchaeus did, was he decided to climb a tree, uh, get over the crowd and see Jesus for himself. It was that important to him that he would do that. Um, you can see him here climbing up that tree so he can see Jesus. Uh, and for his effort, Jesus did see him and he saw Jesus. Jesus actually even called out to Zacchaeus up in the tree, hey Zacchaeus, I'm gonna have dinner at your place tonight. Um, which is a shock to most people um, given who Zacchaeus was. And actually they, took real issue with this. The people in the crowd, 
they got really upset and started talking among themselves. Why would Jesus go have dinner with this sinner, with this person who took our money and was mean and dishonorable? Shouldn't he be coming and hanging out with us? But I don't think they really understood what Jesus understood. You see, when they had, when Jesus had this dinner with Zacchaeus, um, something changed in Zacchaeus. When Zacchaeus encountered Jesus and talked to him, he realized what he'd been doing was wrong. Uh, he actually fell forward and apologized. Actually, I'm going to read from the Bible now and see what Zacchaeus actually said to Jesus. Um, so if you have a Bible, please go grab that and give it a read through with me. We're reading from Luke chapter 19 and it's verse 8. Um, so feel free to, I'll take a moment and you can go grab that or I'll just read it now and listen up real closely. Later that day, Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, I'll give half of my property to the poor and I'll now, now pay back four times as much to everyone I've ever cheated. Zacchaeus does a full 180. He completely turns his life around. Um, he sees and hears what Jesus has to say to him and completely changes. Um, he's actually wanting to live a life now of obedience to Jesus. Um, and I think that's something that we should be thinking about as well. Um, Jesus is actually pure and good and what he has to say to us is important. And we should be listening and obeying what Jesus has to say to us. And it's actually a lot better for us to do so. Zacchaeus here gets to live a much happier and better life with Jesus and knowing him uh, than he did before when he was cheating and stealing people's money. Um, and so that's something I think that we should be thinking about. Um, and I'm going to pray that we would also encounter Jesus in his word as we do this sort of thing, uh, that we might be able to know who God is uh, and then we can obey God um, because of it. So I'm going to pray really quickly. Uh, and so bow your heads, close your eyes, wherever you are. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the story of Zacchaeus, that he chose to climb a tree and we got to learn something about you. Um, thank you that you are pure and good and that we can turn to you in all things. Uh, please help us now as we feel isolated. Um, help us to reach out to one another and care for one another. And please help us to obey you even in uh, difficult times. Amen. All right, guys, that's it for story time. Now we're going to go hang out with my good friend, Diggory. Hey there. So we've been looking at the end of James chapter 1. And in the Bible, it tells us that God is pure and spotless, that he never does anything wrong and that he is perfect. He's and oh, Crocky! Oh, oh man! Oh, hi, Alana! But Crocky, oh, he's just being so, so frustrating. He won't listen to me. He won't do what I say. He won't put away his stinky, stinky socks. There are four of them, by the way. Oh, my goodness. It's just, it's like, it's like, it, it, it's, it's like, a, it's like being a parent. Oh, he, you look after him for a while. Oh, ah, ah. oh okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I've just been telling the kids about God, how he's pure and spotless. Oh, pure and spotless? Yeah, so God does nothing wrong in James chapter 1. It tells us that God is pure and spotless. Well, pure and spotless, you say? Yeah. So, so you're saying that God, he never does anything wrong. He's perfect. Mm -hmm. He is pure and spotless? Exactly, Degree. Oh, you know what, Alada? I get it. Really? Yeah, I get exactly what is going on. You know what my problem is? What? Crocky has spots. What? Yeah, Crocky has spots. See, you just said that God, he never does anything wrong. He is perfect. He is pure and spotless. But Crocky, he does stuff wrong all the time. And that is because he has spots. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I've got it all sorted out. So now I know exactly what I need to do. I need to go and find some green paint to cover up all crocky spots. No, no, okay, no. I'm going to be out no, of here. Diggory, what? Diggory. What, 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 what? No, that's not what the Bible's saying. Well, it, it's not? It's saying that God is pure and spotless. That yeah. He is perfect. It's not about the spots. Oh, it's, it's not about the spots? No, not at all. Oh. He's just saying that he's perfect. Oh, okay, okay. So, so what's it about then? If it's not about the spots... 
Well, in James chapter 1, it tells us that God is pure and spotless. Yeah. And that we have to be pure and spotless too, like God. Well, people have to be pure and spotless like, like God? So, so they can't have freckles? No, that's not what? what it's talking about. Oh, it's not? So being pure and spotless like God is to live for Him, yeah. to follow Him and obey Him. To, to live for Him, to follow Him and obey Him? So, so it's not really about throwing paint all over yourself. No, not at all. Oh, right, but, but, but hang on a sec. Alana, sometimes living for, living for God and obeying Him and following Him, well, well, that would be really, really hard, right? Yeah, it can be really hard, Vigorous. Yeah, really hard. Like, I mean, I mean think about Crocky. He really stinks at listening and following and obeying. I mean, I mean take a whiff of these stinky socks. Yep. Oh. No. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it must be really hard. It can be really hard, Vigorous. Even though we go through hard times, we should be pure and spotless. But we make mistakes. Okay, but if God is pure and spotless, then does that mean that that people can't be with Him because they make mistakes? Well, it should. It should mean that? Yeah. Oh, but no. remember, Diggory, in the Bible it tells us that God sent His Son, Jesus, yeah. to die for us. And he was raised from the dead, yeah. and so that he could take on the punishment, so we can be pure and spotless. So, so people can be with God? Exactly. If we, wow. If we trust him, and if we follow him, then we can be made pure and spotless and be with God. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I've really got to go and deal with this stinky sock situation. Okay, okay so I'm going to be out of here. See you guys. See ya. Oh, come on, Crocky. Oh, he listened. <laughs> So in James, we've learned about how we should be pure and spotless like God. And God sends us the Holy Spirit to help us to be pure and spotless. See you guys. Welcome back, everybody. That was heaps of fun. Um, if anyone can get me Diggory's autograph, please do. I'm a huge fan. Um, but right now, we're going to jump into our memory verse as one of the last things we do. Um, don't worry if you haven't remembered it just yet. We've only gone over it once and it is also here. So you can read it and then not remember it. But we will be making that harder as we go through. Um, however, we will go back over it. I'll give it a reading and then we'll all read it together so we can kind of lock it in our brains. Um, and so I'll just jump in, yeah? I'll give it a read. The Lord did this because he is so merciful and kind. James 5.11. Guys. Honestly, I really love this verse because you get to learn something really cool about God um, in that he's both merciful and kind. Josh went over what those meant last week. Um, merciful, seeking out to give to those who are in need uh, and kindness, kind of also looking out for those as well. Um, you've kind of experienced a lot of kindness from like your parents or from your friends. And I think it's something that we really kind of need at the moment, trying to be kind to each other. And so we can look to God and see that he's both merciful and kind and take that as both an example, but as also as a comfort that we have a God um, who is merciful to us and kind to us, which I think is really, really cool. <laughs> okay, I'm not 100% sure what just happened. Some small earthquake in Australia? Oh, oh no! Oh, it's all mucked up now. How are we gonna learn the memory verse if it's all not in order? Wait, do you guys remember it? I mean, we just went over it. Maybe you could help me put it back the right way? Yeah, okay, let's try and do that the best we can. Um, okay, I think some of them are still in the right place, but maybe, is it supposed to start with merciful? No, probably not. Okay, but, what, which is the other one that it starts with? Oh, the Lord. Actually, you know, you're right. They're both red. Maybe, yeah, actually, we'll give it a go. Whoop. Let's get that one. And that one. That goes there. And this one goes there. All right. Let's give it a read through and see if it works. The Lord and this, because he is so merciful, did kind. That does, no, that doesn't work. There's got to be something else that's the wrong way around here. 
Do you think it's do you think it's the green ones? If we swap them, it might. Lord and this James, he is so merciful. Okay, maybe not. You know what? I think it might be the orange ones, guys. Let me take that one there. And that one there. Alrighty. Alright, all together, let's read it through and see if it makes sense, okay? The Lord did this because he is so merciful and kind. Guys, I think we fixed the memory verse. That looks way better. Um, give it a read for yourselves as well. Don't just read it here. See if you can memorize it for next week. Um, it's in James. Where's the other, where's the other verse going? Huh. Oi, uh, Pat, it's, um, it's, it's on your back. Guys, I found, just give me a second. Well, I got it. Ooh. Hey, uh, pa Patrick, are you, are you okay? I'm okay. Good, ah, oh, good, good. Guys, he's okay. He survived, great. Well, this has brought us to the end of our time together. It's so good to have you join us online. Uh, a few things that I want us to remind about as we go into our week is to remember that God is pure and spotless. There's nothing wrong with Him. He's perfect and good. And as we see that, we want to respond. And the way that we respond is by obeying and following. We want to be listeners and doers. That's really what the Bible's been challenging us uh, with today. And so a few things, we're going to send out a whole heap of other activities that you can do in the week with your families and with your brothers and sisters. Uh, but two things we'd love to see from you. If you want, you can send us a video of you doing the memory verse and we'll include it if your parents are cool with it for the video. Send us in. We'd love to see how you guys are learning it as well as send us pictures of your craft. We are so encouraged when we can see all the wonderful things that you've made. And so get your parents to email that to me. We'll put it in the videos and we will see you next week.